A Call from Alexander, The Triumphs and Tragedies of Alexander Graham Bell. The world was small in the 1800s. There weren't TVs that you could watch your favorite shows on. There weren't radios that you could listen to your favorite music on. And there especially wasn't any phones. The world was full of opportunity. And during this time, the only way to communicate long distances was through Morse code, and also letters. And many people used these methods until one man named Alexander Graham Bell completely changed how communication worked. This invention that Alexander made would change the world forever and would start a huge spark in technology for centuries to come. During this time, slavery had just been abolished, and there wasn't any technology that we knew today. But the world needed a better way to communicate long distances. This all changed when Alexander Graham Bell made a huge breakthrough. And we will tell you his story and how he made the first ever telephone. Alexander was born in Edinburgh, United Kingdom in 1847. His dad was Alexander Melville Bell and his mother was Eliza Grace Simons. His mother was deaf and his father was a teacher who taught elocution for the deaf. Melville was a great teacher and later created something called visible speech. Alexander had two brothers who were Edward Charles Bell and Melville James Bell. Alexander took an interest in music and his deaf mother was very good on the piano and she taught him how to play. At age 11, Alexander entered the Royal High School at Edinburgh. Alexander loved science, but he didn't do very well in school. Also, the same year, Alexander's father allowed him to change his old name to Graham, which is the last name of a family friend of theirs. At age 12, Alexander was at a flour mill owned by a family friend when he realized that dehusking was very long and boring, so he decided to invent a machine that would dehusk wheat grains. The machine was used for years in the mill. He would later call this machine his first invention. Bell wasn't doing very well on schoolwork, so Bell's father thought if he sent his son to his grandfather's, maybe he would learn better. So Bell got homeschooled for a year by his grandfather in London. At age 16, he enrolled at Weston House in Elgin, Scotland. He learned Greek and Latin there. When he was 16, Bell and his brother tried to make a mechanical robot that could talk. The robot was a windpipe and a realistic looking head. They would blow through the windpipe and they could faintly hear recognizable words. Bell moved to different schools throughout the years. When Bell was 20, he had very poor health, and he went back to his family in London. In 1870, Bell was 23, and both of his younger brothers died of tuberculosis, which was one of the major tragedies he had in his life. Bell's parents were very scared about Alexander because he was their only surviving child. So Bell's father convinced Alexander to move to Canada because of the fresh air that would hopefully help improve Alexander's health. Thankfully, Alexander's health got better. When Bell was 25, he went to a school of vocal physiology and mechanics in Boston, Massachusetts. When Bell was 26, he didn't have a universal degree, so he became a professor of vocal physiology and elocution at the Boston University School of Oratory, and Bell wanted to take on his father's visible speech and teach for the deaf. Later, Alexander really wanted to make a machine that could reproduce human speech. When Alexander was 23 years old, he built a workshop in his family home in Ontario, Canada. He used this workshop to convert music to electrical waves. It was 1874, and Bell was 20, 26. There was Morse code at this time, and it was invented in 1830s by Samuel Morse and Alfred Bell. Bell wanted to make it so instead of electrical clicks, it would be human speech. And Bell was getting closer and closer. Bell found out that human speech was like waves and Bell wanted to produce an electrical wave that could follow the same patterns as someone's speech. Bell needed money to continue his project. So he went to Gardner Hubbard and Thomas Sanders, two really wealthy investors, and they decided to invest in his project. With the new money that Bell had acquired, he used some of it to hire an assistant, who was Thomas Watson. He would be very helpful considering he was an electrical engineer. This man would eventually go on and help Bell create his first telephone. When Bell was 27, he decided it was finally time to protect the inventions that he had made with patents. So he put a patent on his electrical transmitter that would transfer speech over an electric wire. Bell wanted to apply for his patent in the UK, so he did. And then after that, he applied for his patent in the USA as well. 
Alexander was getting closer and closer to transmitting the human voice. On March 1876, Bell got his invention to work. Bell's first words on the telephone were from Bell and his assistant, Thomas Watson. Their first words were, Watson, come here, I want to see you. Bell used a sign similar to Elijah Gray's, who was also working on inventing a device that could transmit human speech. Elijah Gray claimed that he made the first telephone, but Bell established the concept of all of the demonstrations of the phone. Bell had to fight over 600 lawsuits in a 20-year legal battle with different inventors who claimed that they invented the telephone. By the summer of 1876, Bell was transmitting telephone voice messages over a line several miles long in Ontario. Bell and his investors offered to sell his inventions to Western Union for $100,000, but they denied because nobody took the phone seriously and everyone thought it was just a fad, and they thought they weren't going to make any money off of it. But in 1878, the telephone was getting bigger and bigger. The Western Union thought if they offered $25 million for the patent, they would just get the patent for a cheap price. But sadly, for Western Union, the Bell Telephone Company launched, and the rest was history. The Bell Telephone Company is now known as AT&T Corporations. In 1880, Bell and his assistant, Charles Summer Tainter, transmitted messages to Washington, D.C., over 200 meters away. Bell kept inventing things after this, and he didn't just stop because he got one successful invention. After James Garfield tragically got shot in 1881, Alexander Graham Bell invented a machine called the metal detector. He used it as an attempt to get the bullet out of James Garfield's body, but the bullet was in way too deep to detect. The metal detector wasn't as good as it is today. In 1881, Bell was one of the founders of what is known today as the National Geographic Society, which he eventually became the second president ever. He was also one of the founders of the Science Magazine. The impact that Alexander had to the rest of the world was that he made a machine that could make it so you could communicate with each other way easier. So if you had a relative that lived in a different state or country, then you'd be able to talk to them through a phone. Alexander Graham Bell died at age 75 because he had been ill because he was suffering from complications from diabetes. The impact that he had on modern day technology changed the way that people communicate and do things in their everyday lives. His invention sparked into even greater things. Like instead of wired phones, now there are wireless phones and you can go wherever you want to call people. His creation of the telephone was a seed that Steve Jobs and other mobile phone creators grew into the cell phones that we all use today. During Alexander's funeral, all phones in America were silenced for one full minute in honor of him. Alexander Graham Bell will always be a great inventor who changed the world. Although he has had so many tragedies, he was able to persevere. In his life, he was able to keep going and not give up. He was also able to triumph by creating an invention that would change the course of history and will make things possible for people that were never possible before. He will always be remembered as the man who invented the first ever telephone. The telephone has changed the world to this day and been communicating with each other so much easier. And what he did helped humanity take a huge step forward. Everybody loved this invention and it has impacted events so much. Without this machine, a lot of things today wouldn't be as advanced as they are now. In our opinion, Bell should go down in history as one of the best and most important inventors of all time. And it all started with these first words. Watson, come here, I want to see you. So the next time you check your phone for work or you text someone, remember, this would all not be possible without Alexander Graham Bell.
The Bell Telephone Company is now known as AT&T Corporations.